Hi, I'm Rhoda Meyer for The Developer Show. This is your weekly update on the coolest developer news from Google. The Android 11 Developer Preview 3 build is now available. DP3 includes a number of new features and changes for you to try, as well as the latest updates to existing features, APIs, and tools. That includes updates to the App Exit Reasons API, ADB incremental support so you can install 2GB plus APKs from your development computer to your Android 11 device up to 10 times faster, wireless debugging, and data access auditing updates. If you're already running a developer preview build, you'll receive an OTA update, and it's available by manual download and flash for Pixel 2, 3, 3a, or 4 devices. Visit the Android 11 developer site for details, and let us know what you think. After a successful time in beta, Google Fonts for Flutter version 1.0.0 is now ready for prime time use on Android, iOS, web, and macOS. Google Fonts enables you to easily experiment with and use any of the fonts from fonts.google.com in your app. We've minimized the work needed to pre-bundle a font and also kept it compatible with dynamic font loading, so you don't have to change your code if you decide to pre-bundle. Check out the Getting Started Guide to learn how to include fonts in your app via text styles or text themes. The dramatic increase in remote devices brought on by the move to remote work makes securing devices even more important. That's why G Suite is introducing six new device data and user controls to help G Suite customers stay secure. These include the ability to manage and configure Windows 10 devices through the admin console, a new data protection insights report in beta to help you prioritize your security efforts and focus on the most relevant data types for your organization, and lots more. Check out the post for all the details. To continue improving the safety and security of our ecosystem, we've made Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI, and Shielded VM the default for everyone using Google Compute Engine, at no additional charge. This provides defense in depth hardening features to all supported VM instances, including protection from malicious guest system firmware, UEFI extensions and drivers, persistent boot and kernel compromise in the guest OS, and VM-based secret exfiltration and replay. We want to be especially mindful of the many challenges organizations are facing, so by making Shielded VM the default for Google Compute Engine, we hope to help simplify your workflows and provide the best peace of mind for your VMs and VM-based services to make sure they're protected from persistent rootkits and bootkits. To learn more, please check out the Shielded VM documentation. We're also announcing the general availability of Managed Backup and Restore for Spanner. This can help you achieve high business continuity and add data protection without much management overhead by providing protection against user or application errors that result in logical data corruption. You can now take consistent on-demand backups of databases in your regional or multi-regional configurations and restore those backups onto the same or different instances with the same instance configuration. We're also introducing several other new features to general availability, including query optimizer versioning, foreign keys, and the C++ client library. Check out the blog post below for more details. The Apps, Games, and Insights podcast just wrapped up its first season. In the latest episode, they talked to The Zone about setting up a subscription-based app or game business. Check out this latest podcast and all past episodes bringing together the latest insights and discussion from industry experts to developers, business decision makers and enthusiasts in the apps and game industry. Please remember to like, subscribe and share. I'm Rona Meyer for The Developer Show. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.